Hello there, and welcome back to the Vineyard Farmhouse. My name is Brian, for those of you that are new to the channel. And in this video, we're going to be working on part two of the Vanity's wooden countertop. And the first thing that we're going to do is mark up these end boards so that we can router the edges. I'm going to be removing these side boards so I could router them, but I wanna know where this one ends because I'm using a chamfer bit and I don't want it to be under there that it look weird. So it's gotta stop like about right here. And then it's gotta stop right here. And then I will sand it smooth where these transitions go. This will be the last test fit before I glue everything up and then I can start sanding it as one piece. <laughs> I can see it in the comments now. All you table makers and such are not going to like this. But in the last video, part one, I showed you how I drilled these plugs and they're kind of loose. They fit in there just the way I want. That leaves me plenty of room to have some filler in there that is matched or actually a little bit darker. This is a farmhouse countertop. And all the imperfect details are very much intentional. So let me show you how I'm going to mix up that wood filler. It's actually pretty easy. You're going to get yourself some premium wood filler from DAP. Let that focus in. Focus. Come on, focus screenshot that so you can know the information and you're also going to pick out your chosen stain color and you're going to mix it and I think he shook this up pretty good but I'm going to give it a good stir first then you're going to take some of your stain Put it on there and you will mix it. Okay, I hate this idea. Plan B. <laughs> More caulking. You saw what I did in the part one video. Well, I'm going to continue to do it in the part two video. We're gonna fill this sucker up like a cream donut. We're gonna take our plug and stick it in there. And we want it to gush out. That was way too much. I'll do better on the next one. Okay, don't cry too much about how I did this. I've done this before. I love the results, and I think you will too. Once these dry, I'll shave them down, and I'll be sanding this whole countertop and getting ready for stain. All right, now that these plugs have had a chance to dry, it's time to cut these buggers off. And an easy way to do this without messing up the surrounding wood is to put a trowel like this and get your cutting tool. And there, it's not all gouged up. The sander will take care of the rest of that. So let's get going on the rest of them.
All right, so now all the plugs are cut. Now it's time to sand. And I'm going to be using a belt sander and an orbital sander. That made some pretty quick work of that. Look at that character. I love it. <laughs> I love working on rustic projects like this because it allows you to break all the rules. All of them. All right, enough of the sanding. Everybody's seen sanding before. Let's get on to the next step. Some of you are probably saying, well, Brian, those perpendicular boards have an end board on it. How are they supposed to expand and contract? Well, here's the solution I came up with. This first part has three screws in it and it's been glued. But for the other boards, that it attaches to. I put these grooves in, so I'm going to screw it and they'll be able to expand and contract. Although, there's probably not gonna be a whole lot of expansion and contraction. This house is heated and cooled year round. And this will also be independent from this sideboard. All the wood used in this project is pine. And most people will tell you that pine is blotchy if you put stain on it directly. So that's why I'm going to use a sand and sealer. Okay, here's a sand and sealer I'm going to be using, made by Verithane. And I'll stay still for a second so you can freeze frame that. You do not want to shake this stuff. You want to lightly stir it. don't want to create bubbles and it should have a milky consistency when it's completely stirred now you want to put this on there really good but you don't want puddles so put it on and smooth it out so let's put on the time lapse and slam on the music. Okay, after allowing that to dry, guess what time it is? It's time for some more sanding. <laughs> and what we're going to use for that is this sanding block. The top side is 220 and the bottom side is 320. We'll be using both of those, but very gently. Look at this contraption. I screwed these boards underneath the countertop for one thing to raise it up above the table so I could get under it while I'm staining and sanding as well as hinge mounting the backsplash board to it. Now when sanding on this sand and sealer, you don't want to make some aggressive strokes. You want to make it nice and simple. We're just cutting down on those fuzzies. And go with the grain. All right, that's pretty smooth now, just the way I need it. So the next thing to do is to take a rag and wipe all the dust and a vacuum cleaner and vacuum up whatever's left over. All 
All right, this is what you've been waiting for. I'm going to be using a water-based. All right, this is what you... <laughs> Take 232s. All right, this is what you've been waiting for. I'm going to be using a transparent. <laughs> All right, this is what you've been waiting for. I'm going to be using a semi-transparent water-based stain made by Minwax. And the color name is Hedgewood. I'm going to stir that up real good. When applying this, you can use any old brush as long as it's free of debris and isn't gunked up with old paint. Because you're just using it as a vehicle to lay it down. This is the Lazy Susan from the kitchen upstairs. So we're going to start with this. I've already sanded and sealed and sanded it. So let's try it out. The trick is, is to lay it out quickly. You don't want to let it sit there too long. There's the first coat on the Lazy Susan. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's work on the countertop and we'll hit all of it with the second coat later. Alright, it's been completely stained. Three coats. Now it's ready for its oil-based poly. And to do that, we're going to use a clear satin oil-based polyurethane by Verithane. Don't forget to wear your mask because this stuff is stinky and it'll eat your brain. Fortunately, it's 65 degrees today and I can open all the windows. Now you only want to steer this, don't shake it, because you don't want to create a bunch of bubbles. And get yourself a fresh brush. I like to use a nylon, it's very smooth flowing. Third and final coat, and then a three day drying period. While waiting for the polyurethane to dry, Papa and I decided to glue together the dovetails of the drawers. Alright, after three days of the polyurethane drying, we are ready to install it in the bathroom. I have made my registration mark so that when I caulk the sink, I know exactly where to set it. I'm not overly cautious about how I place things. I put these blocks here 
as stops so that sink should go exactly where it belongs. I'll be using Ultra Clear by DAP and you can freeze frame that so you can look it up yourself. You don't want to put a whole lot but you don't want to not put enough on either. I can't believe it, it went right where I needed it to go. And now it's time for the goodies. We're going to be installing a three-part brush nickel faucet made by Moen and it's called the Caldwell. You got your instructions, your main faucet, your left and right handles, the lifting rod, You got a tool for tightening the hoses, the hose itself, water line connections, and your drain assembly. And now it's time for some install. If you have the luxury of bringing the countertop out and putting it up on a table so that you can get to the top and bottom of it, do it. It's going to make it a whole lot easier. So the first thing we need to do is stick this faucet down through here and we need to secure it with this washer and nut. And then once you're done squaring the faucet up really good with the sink, you can use this tool and a screwdriver to finish it. and take this little red cap off. Now we're going to be installing the valve bodies. And in order to do that, we're going to use some plumber's putty. So remember like when you were a kid and you rolled little worms out of clay? You're gonna get yourself a nice generous bead and you gotta push it around the collar. It's like that, that's a little too much. Make sure those are nice and center the way you want them. Now you're going to want to put these mounting nuts on. Now you're going to want to put these mounting nuts on here. And your washer and stick it up through the sink. And then put on your slide clip or what I call a C ring. You can start tightening that up. Make sure, make sure you got your hot and cold on the right side now. Because I almost made that mistake. Before tightening everything up, make sure your water supply connections are pointing towards each other. Okay, so I have the counter in the bathroom and upright. And I'm putting the handles on. I've already done the hot. Here's the cold. And you're supposed to turn this counterclockwise all the way. The hot one was clockwise. Then you take the handle and you put it on there. And while holding the handle, you're supposed to twist the base. And there you have it. All right, now it's time for the drain assembly and we're going to be putting some more of the plumber's putty on. Be sure to put plenty on here. It's better to have too much than not enough. You can always squeeze it out and wipe it away.
you want this stopper valve pointed towards the back. Then you can tighten this collar. And there's your squeeze out. And now we can install the bobber valve. At least that's what I call it. I don't have the instructions with me to vouch for that. Okay, so all plumbing is done. Water supply lines and drainage. Let's see how we did. That's pretty center to the drain too. Got it pretty good. Awesome. More goodies. Now it's time to install the drawers and doors. So these are a soft closed system. And when you put it on the track and push it back, you'll hear these things snap in place and then you'll know it's set. The doors are pretty simple too. You just take these two screws and attach these two hinges and there you go. Those are also soft clothes. All right, it looks like it's a wrap on part two of making these countertops. If you haven't seen part one, please go check it out. I'll be leaving the link in the description below. There's also other videos you can be checking out on my channel. And that would be this beautiful 1924 clawfoot tub, which was a complete restoration and install. And there is also a complete video on this toilet install. Next time on the Vineyard Farmhouse, we're going to be installing grab bars as well as a shower head in this gorgeous 5x6 walk-in shower. So if you like the content that this channel has to offer, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to smash the little bell button so you can be notified of the next videos to come. See you next time on the Vineyard Farmhouse. Bye for now. Oh yeah, you're looking at me? What? What?